Hello and welcome to the second video where I'll be working with Apple iPhone scans and I this time I use an application called Scandi Pro that I downloaded and I think I paid so I'm paying a weekly fee for this one at the minute I think it's £1.79 or something like that what this one allows you to do is to choose between a world scan and an object scan and the object scan provides us with a higher resolution from the front a true depth camera than the back so-called LiDAR or TOF camera provides us with. And whilst it has a more limited close range, you can get better geometry. And in this example, I've used a turntable to go around this uh, rather shiny character. And the resolution I'm picking off it is actually quite impressive with a 0.5 millimeter option that this application allows. First thing I'm going to do here in Blender is just select all and then delete and I'm going to import. Now I think with Scandi Pro you can either have a PLY or an OBJ. If you don't see the PLY import you can go up to your preferences here and just make sure that the PLY import is turned on. It might do this by default but what we're going to do is just import one that we took earlier and it may take a little while to load this depending on your system. And the first thing I note when I bring this in is that it's I got three and a half million faces, which is quite high resolution. So we're going to try and trim that down so it's easier to work with. This might work a bit slow on your machine. And I'm going to rotate this by pressing the R key and rotate to the Y axis. And I'm going to go minus 90 with this. I can either put that in there or type in minus 90. And then I am just going to start trimming out some of these excess vertices that I have here. But generally, it's not bad. I'm going, to, I'm going to just show you how to edit this and get rid of some of these holes. So the first thing I'll do is go into edit mode here. And also I will check that I'm in x-ray mode, which will enable me to select all the vertices here. So I'll just click that. And I'm going to make sure points are selected. I can press 1 or just click up here. And I'm going to make little highlighting boxes here and just delete. I can right click there and just delete the vertices I don't need. Again, this might be a little bit slow depending on your spec. We're dealing with millions of polygons, which Blender actually handles quite well. And the same thing here. I press the X key this time, and we're just deleting verts. And make sure you're in X-ray mode if you're going to do this. It'll get rid of everything it sees in the line of sight. And all these loose islands, which I don't need, I'm going to delete out. And then I can move to another view, I just hold rotate and then tap the alt key to lock to a viewport or you can use four viewports, there's numerous ways to do this but take a bit of time over this just to clean up and delete anything you don't need again there's numerous ways you can do this so again I'm going to lock on that and just have a look and see what else I need to get rid of. I've got a hole at the back of the neck there if I go back into object mode you can see that so what I'm going to do with my one is just go back into the edit mode there and then maybe just take off a bit of this. And I know this is a bit of an awful model. This is horrible androgynous head. I'm sure you'd have something better to scan, but this was quite easy. Because f faces and bodies move, it's often quite hard to get the whole 360 scan. E even with solid objects, it can be difficult enough, but this is just a good example of something that um, is easily scannable. And then I'm going to go up to the top here and just trim off some of the excess there. I'm still in x-ray mode here and this is all about zooming in and panning out and just getting rid of the vertices you don't want. Okay that's not looking too bad. The next thing I'm going to do, I just always do this, is just to move it somewhere close to the center. This is useful if you are um, importing it into something else or you're working in game software or something like that and you just want everything centered and the other thing I need to note is that the origin or the pivot point in some softwares is not central to the model so I can right click and just go to set origin origin to geometry and I just put it in the middle so if I want to rotate it in something else now that's in the center okay it's not looking too bad I still have 300,000 faces which is too much for something which isn't that high a resolution so I'm going to go to my modifiers here, I'm in object mode, and I'm going to choose decimate. 
which will reduce the number of polygons and I'm going to choose maybe a ratio of uh, 0 0.3 here and if I look down at my faces this should update down to 90,000 I've got now but I don't appear to have lost a great deal of resolution uh, I'm going to go ahead and apply that and if I don't feel like it's done it enough or if I want less faces I've got 90,000 here so I might just do that again I can either go back and reapply it or I can just put another modifier on there and I'm going to divide it down still haven't lost that much resolution but I've got 45,000 faces and you'll start to notice that everything should work a lot quicker and again if I want to use this for AR or import into a games engine or even just put on Sketchfab or make a 3D video or anything like that it's a lot easier to work with now because effectively the resolution has been reduced the next thing I want to do is turn these triangles into quads and also close up some of these holes so I'll go back into my modifier and I'm going to go into remesh now this might only work on later versions of blender I think it's 2.82 and above and I am going to apologies I need to be in object mode for this in order for it to work I just hit tab and go into object mode or select from there and I'm going to apply that remesh again and this gives you different options for just turning everything into quads and simultaneously closing holes I'm going to go into the smooth setting here I'm going to bring this resolution up a little bit and watch my faces down here. I've got 52,000 faces. The holes have been closed and this looks pretty good. I leave scale and threshold for now and hit apply. And if I go into my edit mode, I'll see that we have some nice quads going on in there. And if I shade smooth, maybe not. So the next thing I'm going to do is to go into sculpting mode here and show you guys how to sort out some of these bumpy bits. So by default, I've got symmetry turned on here. I can remove this just by clicking down there, going to tool and symmetry and turning that off. And then what I can start doing is by holding down the shift key, I can start to apply the smooth brush to smooth out some of this detail at the top and under the chin. Oh, wrong brush. Let's go back on the history there and just hold the shift key and smooth some of that out. And also the bits at the back here where we've got this horrible join. I'm not taking too much time on this. I'm just doing it very quickly for this video, but you can turn this into an art form if you want. And I also notice the top of the head is missing there a little bit, so I might just use the grab brush here. Make my brush a bit bigger here by choosing this radius or using the square brackets. And utilizing all my views here, I'm just going to try and sculpt some detail back into this head. Obviously, if you can spend some time on this and have a, a reference model uh, and do this properly, and ideally use a Wacom tablet. I'll just smooth out a little bit if I get anything wrong. This is quite bumpy, so I'll just go in there and smooth that out. Use all my views to sort of make sure I've got something usable. And I can also use this elastic deform, which is kind of like the move in said brush, just to make minor adjustments. Oh, that's an awful shaped head. Never mind. Smaller brush here, maybe. Pull some of that out there. And smooth it off. For now, on the mouse, that's probably going to be an okay. Still got a weird shaped head there, but. I can use the move to get that looking a bit better. Not too bad. I usually do this with a graphics tablet and spend a bit of time on it, but as luck would have it, I've not got one. So really for an iPhone, that's not too bad for just a quick scan. And then if I want, I can bring this into another scene and light it correctly and really start to do something else with it here. I've just imported it into this gallery scene that I have. Applied some lighting. 
there we have it okay thanks very much for tuning in if you want to see anything else just um, subscribe and just comment in the comments below and um, I'm happy to do another video if there's something that you particularly want to see thank you for watching